obviously always going to be operating as our first kind of question is it operating if it's not operating then is it investing and then is it financing operating having to do with cash flows related to similar transactions as the income statement so if we're talking about a, a cash flow that deals with something that would normal be a normal operation revenue and expenses related but cash flow related to them probably operating investing activities going to be dealing with the uh, investments in stocks and bonds and things like that normal types of things we think of as investments but also having to do with investments in long-term fixed assets like property planting equipment financing activities having to do with things that we're using to finance the company we're trying to generate capital money in the company that we can use to run the business or we're paying back capital or money to run the business so if we're taking out a loan or if we're getting issuing stock or we're getting money from investors or we're paying back a loan, we're paying back the investors with dividends or draws. Once we have this information, you can note that the normal format is similar to any financial statement. We're going to group this information in the inner column. So this is a subcategory of operating activities. We'll list all the operating activities in the inner column and then we'll, sum, we'll total them up in the outer column. So these two columns do not represent debits and credits like any financial statement. They're not going to show debits and credits because we don't want to have to explain debits and credits to normal readers of the financial statements. So we're going to convert the debits and credits into a plus and minus format. And then we're going to have these two columns be the subtotals. So that means these totals in the outer column then, this is going to be net cash provided or used operating activities, net cash provided or used in investing, and net cash provided or used in financing. If we add or subtract those up, whichever way they be going in terms of cash flow, then we're going to get the net cash uh, increase or decrease in cash, net increase or decrease in cash. That's going to be these three items here. This is really what we're looking for in the statement of cash flows because this is the activity. This is what happened. We're looking for that change in cash. Cash has changed. How did it change? Well, here's the story of how it changed in terms of these summary stories operating investing and in, in financing and then here's the more detail in terms of those three categories of what happened what's going on with this change but we don't want to just report this cash change because if we did so then readers of the financial statement would have to do some math in order to tie everything out they'd have to subtract the comparative balance sheet uh, cash on the first period to the next period to see what the change is to make sure that this number ties out to it and we would like to have something at the bottom of the cash flow statement that readers can tie out easily and say okay these i see how these two statements are related so what we'll do is we'll take this change and we'll we'll add to it the cash balance at the prior period end so we're going to say here's the difference here's what changed here's what the cash was at the beginning of the time period which is the same as the end of the last time period and then that'll give us cash flow at the end of the period so then this cash flow then is what will tie out to the balance sheet. So it'll, it'll match what's on the balance sheet. So again, this is really what we're looking for. We're looking for the change, the activity, what's going on. But we want to tie it out to the bottom line number on the balance sheet so people have a very easy check. They can just go right to this bottom line number and say, okay, yeah, that matches the balance sheet. It looks like this whole thing ties out. I see where this fits in.